uh, take your seats. Sylvia? All right, so thank you very much. If, um, if you attended the previous lecture by Guy Tamboro, um, this, um, this lecture is going to be very, very related to what he was discussing. In fact, it's the same topic. Uh, it's about proving central limit theorems for fluctuations in these uh, log gases uh, or Coulomb gases. Okay, so I've uh, put back on the board the uh, quantities that we are dealing with. So this is the, the energy with G, um, the Coulomb or log kernel. This is the uh, Gibbs measure. And we have seen that we have a splitting of the energy in this form with the next order energy, which is just the, this quantity here, which is the sort of self-interaction of the fluctuations away from, uh, from the diagonal. Okay, so uh, the, the thing we want to prove is uh, something like this. So let's write theorem. So consider C a regular enough uh, function. So here let's assume four derivatives. In fact, what we really need is that the third derivative is Lipschitz. Um, and compactly supported in R2. So I'm going to work here. I'm going to state the theorem in the two-dimensional logarithmic case. And then I'm going to comment. And so you want to consider the fluctuations of xi. Then this converges in law to a Gaussian random variable with a certain mean and a certain variance, which are explicit. And in particular, the variance is essentially given by some constant over beta, some constant which I forget. But. Uh, the gradient squared of the test function xi. And so here there is a little twist. There is this sigma here, which means that, okay, if xi is supported inside sigma, which is the support of the equilibrium measure, then this is just the integral of the square of the gradient. But if xi has a support which touches the boundary, which you can be interested in, then you have to take the harmonic extension of xi outside of sigma. So xi sigma means harmonic extension of xi outside sigma. And uh, for um, experts, this can be phrased in terms of the uh, convergence to a Gaussian free field of, uh, of the potential Hn mu v converges to a Gaussian free field. Okay, so this theorem in 2D uh, was first proved by um, Ryder Virag in uh, the Ginebre ensemble case when v is quadratic, and by Hammer and Denmark Makarov for beta equals 2, uh, which is the determinantal case with, for which you have other ways of computing. Uh, this is for any beta, and uh, so this theorem was proven at the same time by uh, Thomas Leblay and myself, and also by the team of uh, Bauer, Schmidt, Bourgade, Nicolas, and Yao, uh, with slight differences, but essentially the same. Um, there is also a local version of this theorem. You can take xi to be supported on mesoscopic scales, and the result is still true. So you remember you have the set sigma, and basically you're testing things here in some set. And you could take xi to be, um, let's say, some xn, which is a fixed rescaling of, of uh, the, the rescaling of a fixed function xi at a scale ln, which is much bigger than, uh, so let's say ln equals n to the alpha minus alpha with alpha strictly less than one half. OK, so it means that even if you zoom down, this behavior uh, is still true. And as I was 
uh, saying yesterday it means that the fluctuations are actually much better than order n, much better than order root n, which we obtained yesterday. But in fact, they are typically of order 1. But this is for test functions, which are quite uh, regular. And so in particular, you cannot take uh, something for which it would be wrong. It would be to take the characteristic function of a certain set. Uh, because if you could take the characteristic function of a set, you would be essentially able to count the number of points in a set. Uh, and that is not, uh, the fluctuations of that are not expected to be of order one, they're expected to be uh, much larger. Okay, so the, the restrictions are uh, certainly not optimal, but there are some necessary regularity uh, restrictions. Okay, so in 1D, there is an, an analog result, as uh, Gaetan was talking about, uh, which uh, was proved by um, uh, several, uh, several authors, so starting with Johansson uh, in, for the 1D logas, uh, Johansson, Sherbina, uh, Boro Guyonnet, uh, and Gaetan presented that. And uh, of course the, okay, the statement is very similar. So now let, let us see uh, how to prove something like that. And the method I'm uh, going to present is based on uh, the idea of a change of variables. So the starting point is as uh, Gaetan described, and uh, it's the, the, the method introduced by Johansson. You want to compute the Laplace transform of the fluctuations. So the Laplace transform is nothing else but the expectation of t times integral of xi. So you know I call this fluct n. Right, so this, this quantity uh, called fluct, like fluctuation. Okay, so this is the, the Laplace transform. Uh, if you manage to show that the Laplace transform converges to that of a Gaussian with uh, appropriate means and variances, then you will be done. So it's about con um, looking at the convergence of that. So why is this Laplace transform a convenient object to look at? Well, because if you compute this expectation, you are actually computing 1 over Zn, integral of exponential minus beta over 2. You remember the energy, right? So you have the sum of g of xi minus xj plus n sum of v of xi. And now you're adding here plus t sum of xi of xi minus something constant, which is the integral of t mu v, and with an n. Okay, so the, the sum of xi of xi, after all, I can group it with v to make it the same thing, but with a modified potential, right? So let me change things a little bit now, and let me put an n here. And this way I put an n here, and it, it goes with the v, so I find 1 over zn. And I find plus n sum of v plus t c of xi. And then this term is constant, I can just take it out of the integral. So let's put it in front, exponential minus uh, or plus beta over 2 Tn integral of xi mu v. All right, so what we find here is this integral. It's exactly the same as the partition function, except for this modified potential. And so the idea is that this is something that we can hope to compute. And so I will now write it like this. So I have this constant term, which maybe is wrong, and I'm not sure. Um, yeah, actually there's no beta. And there's a minus. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I did something completely... Um, 
okay, my factors beta are wrong, so instead of changing it into Tn, I'm also going to put a minus beta over 2. It will not change anything, and then everything goes into the beta over 2. So it's good. And so here I find the ratio of the partition function associated to vt, so let me write it like this, with the partition function associated to v0. And I write vt equals v plus tc. All right, so I have changed things a little bit here. So I'm not, uh, instead of computing the Laplace transform, I'm computing the Laplace transform up to a factor. So later, what I will want to do is I will want to take tau equals minus beta over 2 Tn. And this way, I will have the expectation of exponential tau times the fluctuation. Right? So this means that at the end of the computation, I want to be able to take t equals minus 2 over beta n times tau, which means I will be interested in very, very small perturbations. You see, t will be very small. It will be of order 1 over n. But for notational purposes, it's nicer to keep it as t. OK, so this is why. Now we're interested in looking at the ratio of partition functions for a modified gas with respect to the original gas. OK. So what do we do with that? Well, we have this uh, splitting formula here, which allowed us, if you remember, to remove the dominant terms of order n squared from uh, all the quantities, and in particular, from the partition functions so I can write a reduced partition function, let's say, which is k n v, uh, which is just z n v exponential beta over 2 n squared i v of mu v for any potential. And this thing uh, sort of comes out of the Gibbs measure, so I can rewrite p n beta as equal to 1 over k and v exponential minus beta over 2. And what I have here is my next order energy, uh, fn mu v, plus the confining effective potential, right, dxn. OK, so when you want to compute this ratio of partition functions, you can um, you can compute the ratio of the KNs because the other part is something that's explicit and you can compute the ratio of these guys properly. And so that fi uh, if you put that together, you find that this expectation that you're looking at, minus beta over 2 Tn uh, fluct OK, I can rewrite it after a little bit of uh, not much as the ratio of the Kn Vt, Kn V, and a term that's explicit, and which is essentially going to give the variance. So it's going to give you something like this exponential whatever, t squared, some constant here. OK, so this thing in the end, uh, you, you remember I take tau to be this. This is, the, this is the variable for my Laplace transform in the end. So this term is going to give exactly the variance, because when you, when you take the log of this, it's going to give a, a quadratic function. So this is already settled. Now what we have to study is the ratio of these reduced partition functions. OK, so if you have to look at a modified uh, log gas with a modified potential, then of course there is a modified equilibrium measure. So now I'm going to denote mu0 
the original uh, equilibrium measure, and mu t, the one associated to v t. And the first question is, what does mu t look like? So it turns out that if you're in a Coulomb case, it's not too difficult to study uh, mu t. So let's say in the 2D log case, you may remember that mu v had a density which was given by Laplacian v over 4 pi times the characteristic function of the set sigma. So if you're in the 2D log case, if xi is supported inside sigma, then uh, perturbing the you know perturbing the potential there like this does not change the support. And for t small, you can check it's not difficult that mu t will simply be mu zero plus the appropriate thing. So plus t Laplace and xi over four pi. And the support doesn't change. So this is this. And since Laplace and xi is inside the support, I don't have to do anything. Okay? So this is the new equilibrium measure. And now if xi is not supported in sigma, then this is not true because the, uh, the support of the equilibrium measure will move a little bit. So you have a support like this, and it will move typically by an order t. So things will move a little bit like this. Okay, th this case is harder to treat for that reason. You have to understand the new equilibrium measure. However, that can be done, and I will not go into the details of that case. Just know that it can be done. And I will continue with the setting where um, it's supported inside the sigma. And so now the next step is to build a transport map, a map phi t such that phi t push forward of mu zero is approximately equal to mu t. This will create a transport map for which we can make good change of variables. And of course, since t is very small, we are doing something asymptotic. So we can expect that phi t, we can, we can, try to, we can build it as a perturbation of identity. So it will be an identity plus t psi. And the question is to build the psi that will do this. So you will not transport exactly to mu t, but to leading order in t, it will be the same. So it will be approximately mu t, if you want, plus little o of t in some sense. And so if you're in 2D and mu t is, as I said, mu zero plus t Laplace and xi, then it's actually not difficult to see that psi equals gradient xi over mu zero does the job. So you have an explicit transport. And if xi is regular enough, uh, this thing is regular. So, so why is uh, this equation uh, the right one? I mean, why is this psi the right one? Well, I don't know if you know the definition of transport and push forward, but uh, let me write it now. Right, phi t push forward mu zero is a measure that you can call mu tilde t, so it's an approximation of mu t, which is such that if everything has a density, the determinant of d phi t is equal to mu zero divided by mu t of phi t. This is the formula for change of variables, right? So you're saying that your measure is pushed forward by phi t. 
And now if phi t is identity plus t psi, I can linearize and I find 1 plus t times the divergence of psi equals to mu 0. And then I can also linearize this mu t of phi t. So I'm going to find mu 0 uh, minus, so plus, okay, maybe I should write it here. Well, you can linearize everything, so. So we have mu t plus t over 4 pi Laplace and psi. I'm keeping only terms of order t, and I will have a grade mu 0 dot t times gradient mu 0 dot psi. And if you look at this and you identify terms of order t, you find that you must solve this equation. Divergence of mu 0 gradient psi equals Laplacian of xi. And now look at this. This psi obviously solves this. OK, so this is the linearization of the mont jean equation, if you want. OK, so this is nice in the Coulomb case, because in the Coulomb case, we're dealing with local operators, the Laplacian. If you are in 1D, you could still build a good psi. And in 1D, a good psi can also be built. And building this good psi is actually very similar to inverting the operators that Gaetan was talking about earlier. So in some sense, this transport business is containing some of the ideas of the Schwinger-Dyson uh, equations. But OK, you can view it in a very naive way, just trying to build a transport. All right, so now we have the good psi. And we want to compute the ratio of partition functions, right? So I go back to my partition function. So I have to compute this. And I remember my splitting the formula. So I have fn, and now it's with respect to mu t of xn plus 2n, the zeta t dxn. And let me make the change of variables that xn is phi t of yn, where phi t is the um, the transport I just defined. And so if I do that, I find myself with exponential minus beta over 2, fn mu t of phi t of xn. I have the zeta terms of phi t. OK, so everything that continues here is in the exponent. Huh? So 2n and then I have to include the Jacobian of the change of variables. So if you remember, the Jacobian of a change of variables is the determinant of d phi t. Um, I can put the determinant uh, inside the exponent. And it will not be very clear, but I will continue. So plus, which is still in the exponent. Huh? So whatever, there is exponent of sum of log that d phi t of xi. And finally, I close my integral. OK. So the zeta t terms, don't worry about them. They, they don't really play a role. Now I find myself with this modified, the energy with the modified um, measure, the moved, the, the points that are transported. And I have this Jacobian term. 
So the idea is I want to com compare them with Kn v0. So I can certainly write this as the integral of exponential minus beta over 2. Fn mu t of phi t minus Fn mu 0 of xn. So I take it and I put it back. So let me drop the zetas because, as I said, they're not so important. Plus, so I have exponential sum of log dead d phi t. And then I have exponential Fn minus beta over 2 Fn xn. So I have here the terms that I would have for the partition function of the original uh, of the original gas. So if I rewrite this, I am just computing the expectation under the Gibbs measure associated to V0 of exponential minus beta over 2, the modified thing, minus the original one, plus this sum log that d phi t. All right. So I, this is just a computation, right? I started with the ratio of two partition functions. And I compute this ratio by making a change of variables. So sorry, I should write here. This is the ratio knvt by knv0. And if you remember, if I know this ratio, I will have my Laplace transform at the end. So this is what we need to compute. And it, so now it's about comparing energies, these these next order energies, when you modify um, the charges by pushing them by phi t. And now I'm going to cheat and go to one dimension. So I'm going to do this comparison in 1D. Uh, and at the end, I will tell you a little bit of what you have to do in 2D. Because in 1D, this computation can be made completely explicitly, and it's quite easy. So let's go. So I want to compute this thing, fn mu t of phi t of a configuration minus fn mu 0 of the same configuration. I just have to use the definition here. So I have the double integral of minus log of x minus y. And here I have. Uh, yes, x minus y, sum of the Dirac's at phi t of xi minus mu t, and the same, minus the same thing with mu 0. plus the complement of the diagonal. And then I have the sum of the Dirac's. OK. So now I remember that f mu t is approximately, and for the purpose of this talk, I will assume it's equal to the push forward of mu 0 by phi t. So by definition of a push forward, when I'm integrating something against the push forward of a measure, it's the same as changing the variables in the integrand. So this is the same as looking at minus log of phi t of x minus phi t of y. And the original fluctuation 
against itself. And then, of course, I add the same with log of x minus y. OK. But now this thing I can simplify. I can group things together. And this becomes equal to minus log. So I have simply the ratio of phi t of x minus phi t of y divided by x minus y. And this thing, this fluctuation. So let's write it deflect of x, deflect of y. Right? Next thing, I remember that I'm expanding in t when t goes to 0. And phi t is identity plus t psi. OK, so I can expand the logarithm. And if I do that, in 1d, I'm going to get this thing. I'm going to get t times psi of x minus psi of y divided by x minus y. Deflect of x, deflect of y. OK, so I have this term. And you see it's t times something. I will write this term a. So if you had the patience to follow this whole calculation, what we have done, yeah? No, so there is no log because you see I'm expanding. Right, so phi t of x, I write it as x plus t psi of x. This I write as x plus t psi of y. And so I have x minus y divided by x minus y. And then I use the expansion that uh, log of 1 plus th is approximately th. Right, so log disappears by linearization, you find a term that's, if you compute, you will find a term exactly like this. OK. So I was computing the ratio of partition functions. And I arrived at the expectation of something which I can approximately write as exponential minus beta over 2. 